Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can We Know About Dinosaurs' Social Lives? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature, published on October 21, 2021. Research conducted by Diego Pohl, Adriana C. Mancuso, and others from El Museo Paleontologico Egidio Ferruglio and the Argentine Institute of Novology, Glaciology, and Environmental Sciences, both in Argentina. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Fossils tell us a lot about how dinosaur shapes changed over time but learning how dinosaur behavior changed over time is a lot harder to do. That's why we were so excited to find a treasure trove of Musaurus patagonicus fossils in Patagonia, in southern Argentina. We found fossils of eggs, hatchlings, juveniles, and adults. Musaurus lived in the early Jurassic about 193 million years ago. It is an early cousin of the giant sauropods, like Diplodocus. Clues from our fossil find tell us about Musaurus's social lives. They lived in herds, nested in colonies, and spent time in age-separated groups. This is the oldest fossil evidence of dinosaur social behavior ever found. Introduction. How do your friends and family make your life better? Humans are social animals. We take care of family members. We teach each other how to live and how to be happy. Many animals have complicated social lives too. Have you ever seen ants working together to build a nest or carry food? Or birds flocking together? Other examples are wolves hunting together and beaver colonies building dams and mounds. Social behavior is an adaptation that helps us and other animals thrive. Evolution is the gradual changes in living things over many generations. Little differences between parents and children can add up to big changes over thousands of generations. Adaptations are changes that make organisms more likely to survive. An adaptation could be a change in an organism's body, like camouflage helping animals avoid predators. It could also be a change in the organism's behavior. Scientists learn about animals, plants, and other living things from the past through fossils. By comparing fossils of organisms from different times, scientists can learn how they evolved over millions of years. Fossils are really useful for seeing how the shapes of plants and animals evolved, but it's really hard to see from fossils how animal behavior evolved. Sauropodomorphs are a group of dinosaur species that first appeared in the early Triassic period, about 230 million years ago. They were herbivores, plant eaters. By the end of the Triassic, they were the most common kind of herbivore. At the end of the Triassic, many plant and animal species went extinct, but the sauropodomorphs survived. The descendants of these survivors include Musaurus and other species. These later evolved into the giant and long-necked sauropods, such as Supersaurus and Diplodocus. Why did the sauropodomorphs survive and flourish when so many other dinosaurs didn't? Was it that they were bigger than other herbivores? Was it because they grew quickly to adulthood? Or could it be that the social lives of sauropodomorphs gave them an advantage? That's what we wanted to find out. It takes a lot of work to unearth a fossil without damaging it. This is a photo of our dig site in Patagonia, in southern Argentina. You can see the location of the dig on the map inset in the upper left of the photo. You can see that we took careful notes as we dug up the fossils. The photo shows three people, one of which is taking notes. Methods we looked for fossils in sedimentary rocks called the Laguna Colorada Formation. A few fossils of Musaurus patagonicus were found there in the 1970s. We used a technique called X-ray tomography to make 3D models of the fossilized embryos inside of the eggs without breaking the eggs apart. 
Here in figure one, you can see four photos. Number one shows that we recorded the size and shape of the nests in our notebooks. You can see someone writing in a notebook in the bottom left of the photo. Number two shows that a Musaurus egg is about as big as a baseball. Number three shows how we brought the eggs to a lab where we could x-ray it. The photo shows two people arranging a fossil on a tray for it to be x-rayed. Number four shows that with the x-rays, we could see inside the egg. The photo shows a lot of little bones within a white circle. Looking at the photos, why is it important for the paleontologist to take notes on how the fossils were arranged in the ground? We then used a computer program to estimate the weight of the dinosaurs based on the thickness of the femur bone. We also used a technique called uranium lead dating to measure the age of the rocks. Figure 2. By measuring the femur bone, we can estimate the weight of Musaurus patagonicus at each age. Hatchlings would have only been about 60 to 70 grams, or 2 to 3 ounces, about the weight of a plum. The juveniles we found would have been about 10 kilograms, and our adult dinosaurs would have weighed up to 1,500 kilograms. In the image, you can see five differently aged dinosaurs, with the oldest toward the top right of the image and the hatchling towards the bottom left of the image. The femur bone in the back leg is identified in the adult dinosaur. Results. We found 69 new Musaurus specimens and over 100 eggs. We found fossils of many different sizes, from hatchlings to adults. We estimate that the babies weighed only 70 grams, or 2.5 ounces, when they were born, but a year later they weighed about 10 kilograms, or 22 pounds, and the adults grew up to 1,500 kilograms, or 3,300 pounds. For the curious, this is about the same as a rhinoceros. Small skeletons tended to be next to other small skeletons, and large skeletons tended to be next to other large skeletons. The eggs were in groups of 8 to 30. The eggs were in trenches, piled up in two or three layers. Some of the eggs had fossilized embryos inside that we could see in the x-rays. We expected the fossils to be from the late Triassic, about 210 million years ago. Our measurements show that the fossils are from the early Jurassic instead, 193 million years ago. Discussion. Learning from fossils isn't just about finding the full skeleton. We learn a lot from carefully paying attention to where we find the fossils and what position the fossils are in. That's why it's exciting that we found so many fossils in one spot. Since we found infants, juveniles, and adults in the same place, we think that Musaurus spent time together throughout their lives. The way the nests and eggs were laid out makes us think Musaurus nested in colonies. Because fossils of juveniles were mostly next to other fossils of juveniles, we think that groups of the same age hung out with each other. Modern animals that go through large changes in size from birth to adulthood do this too. This is because animals have different needs while they are growing up than when they are adults. Our fossil find isn't the only sign that dinosaurs had social lives. Fossilized footprints show that some sauropods in the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods traveled in herds. Other fossil finds from those periods also show age grouping. Our find is 40 million years older than any other evidence for dinosaur social behavior. Conclusion Dinosaurs and birds evolved from primitive reptiles. Birds living today can have complicated social lives. Many care for their young. Some hunt and forage in groups. Others mate for life. Those behaviors evolved at some point in the past. It is amazing to find signs of these social behaviors in such an old fossil site. Friends and family are important to you, too. Can you think of something you learned from an older relative? What about your friends? 
Spending time with others is important for our well-being, and we can achieve more when we work together. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.